Well, here we are. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Who saw a pterodactyl? <laughs> Welcome to Belize! There's the airport. You guys doing okay back there? We're doing fine. You're doing okay? Perfect. This is Joe. You guys know Joe. Hello. Marissa, you already know Marissa. And what's your name? Helena. Helena, nice to meet you. And Louise, this is your first Gatorland vlog. <laughs> or the second one. Oh, it is the second one. Jane, you're the MVP of the trip. Yeah, I signed the book. Because <laughs> he recognized the hat. The hat's where it's at. No one's going to recognize me without my hat on, is the thing. They're going to be like, who's the new girl? <gasps> hey, y'all, it's me, Savannah, and it's time for the next vlog. And this vlog is a Gatorland Global Trip to Belize with our good friend, <laughs> Dr. Marissa Tejas from the Crocodile Research Coalition. Louise Ziegler from the Dallas World Aquarium. And Louise, what is it exactly that you do? Well, I do conservation and I'm the director of conservation on the reptile department. And what are you gonna do here in Belize? Well, we're trying to uh, do a little surgery on Sam's teeth in, in her snout and trying to recover the smile. Of the <laughs> nice. And we'll tell you guys more about that in a little bit. We're on the way to do some outreach. Outreach. Not research, outreach. And of course, always with us on our Gatorland Global Trip is Mr. Joe Wazalewski, <laughs> who is going to dress like a crocodile this morning. Yeah! We're going to be in a YouTube video. Oh, I have a channel. I only have 42 subscribers. Yeah? You have a channel? What's the name of your channel? Oh my God. What is it? Okay. okay. Well, now you can see yourself on ours. Say hi, Darcy. Hi. Say hi, TJ. Hi. And what are we making, Darcy? So we're going to be playing with the kids a crocodile diet game. Uh-huh. Um, so basically, it demonstrates what crocodile eats. Uh, basically, this is a crocodile's mouth. Do they eat spaghetti? In some situations, they do get it. Because <laughs> a, so a lot of people here in Belize live close to the lagoon. Well, crocodile habitat, and uh -huh. most of your leftover food, you also crocodile eats this food. Okay, what do you, do you eat spaghetti? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you are careful for animal you request. Oh, not perfect. Fish! American crocodile that we have here, and even the more or less, their primary diet is eat. They love to eat fish. So our crocodiles love eating fish. There you go. Good job! Yay! Oh, one more time, one more time. Okay, so we've had an amazing day of outreach. Uh, we took a class from Louise that was amazing and I learned how to tie knots, so everybody look out for that. And we studied crocodile teeth and we studied crocodile skulls. And now, where are we going, Marissa? Now we are going to the CRC land to meet some of our crocodile ambassadors, such as Gilly, Sam, and maybe the infamous turtle known as Mad Max. And then we are also going to go out for a crocodile capture survey. Nice!
Well, here we are. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Who saw a pterodactyl? <laughs> this is the bridge. This is the bridge. Sweet. I like the bridge. Are you an Iguanosaurus Rex? Yes. Yeah. What do you think, Joe? Pretty cool. I like it. I like it a lot. That's Sam! That's Sam! Oh my gosh, that is Sam! together is several months ago I noticed one of our crocodile ambassadors Sam she had no teeth and originally I just kind of thought all right maybe stress or she's older than we thought not a big deal but the last several months where I've been target training her and building a bond where she allows me to pretty much get in her face I've been able to get an up close look at her mouth area and that's when I noticed that there were some teeth pockets that looked like there was inflammation. And there were days where she just seemed really slow and I could tell something was wrong with her. And so I spoke with Luis, as Luis was here when he helped me transfer Sam from her old home to uh -huh. her new home with the CRC. And he got even mentioned as well, like, you oh, know, there might be some retained teeth in her pockets, in her teeth pockets that's possibly causing some pain. So I spoke with him, and long story short, here we are. <laughs> I was working in Mexico in a zoo, and we have a very old, more or less, crocodile toothless. And he passed away. I prepared this skull and this skin for taxidermy for the museum. I noticed this particular area that had the inflammation, and then we also have this area right here that has the inflammation. And when I was trying this skull, my dog start chewing on this skull, <laughs> and he opened one of those uh, sockets, or, or, or the two sockets, and I said, oh my god, he ruined it. But what he was doing, he showed me that there were two <laughs> retained, two retained inside. So I said, we have the chance to do this in a live program. If we take an x-ray, we can see if there's a uh, kid inside, and we can reopen. <laughs> Is, it, is that another one? Yeah, it's part of it in there. Total traffic jam up there, huh? Oh my god. Yeah. Poor guy. They have the same pain levels, like, like doing now pain levels. They can control pain, but it has a local anesthesia. No, I'm not like just. For a long term, a long term. Like, that was us. We would yeah. This would be, oh, yeah. this is like a root canal, really. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and, and they don't knock us out, they just, uh... Yeah, oh, I didn't mean for the procedure, I'm not like... <laughs> like the pain. Yeah. Like this pain, like, what was going on? Oh, yeah, 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 I'll bet. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the, when I, when I feed her, you can tell she's very particular about how oh, she bites. Yeah, it's a, it's a girl. You can tell how 
she moves around and it's very particular and there's a certain um, I have to look back at my notes, but there's one oh. side she prefers eating on. It's because I think there's there's less pain. But you can see it in the eyes too. There's just days. I was mentioning to Gil like when you're when you're mm -hmm. sick just and you just have that gaze look. But it's a huge there's been so yeah, many days where she's just had yeah, that it's look. Yeah, like it's like a She's in pain. So when she go on antibiotics, how does that work? Yep. Yeah. Local and um, systemic. How do you administer those? In the food or injectable? Oh, okay. Careful. Either way. Yeah, either way. Careful. What's going on? Big chunk. What we learned is there's no need of drilling, it's just the skin covering yeah, yeah. the opening. So that was a, a good thing yesterday we learned. The x-ray didn't show anything different. We uh, go for all the teeth that we can uh, remove. It was all infection and uh, it looks like the crocodile is fine with little pain and she's ready to go back home. We talk all the time at Gatorland about our bonds with our animals and how that bond allows us to get closer to those animals, just like what just happened with Marissa and Sam. So Sam had tried to attack Steve Irwin a long time ago, right? <laughs> yes. So that's a great reference to put in here. But for whatever reason, Sam is bonded with the youth. There's so much about crocodiles that we don't know yet. And this is just an, an amazing example of how that bond that Marissa had with that crocodile allowed us to pull in Louise Ziegler, <laughs> who's who for 18 years wanted to try to sell a live crocodile. Finally, I do. And we then did. we all collectively got together, and that's a lot because of you guys. Every time you watch a Gatorland vlog, you're contributing by watching the commercials, and that's what gave us the money to be able to help Marissa and to fly Louise here and get us all together. Kids to get hurt and get bigger. And we don't want it to get hurt either. Understandable. Cool thing to dumb animals is do it around someone. No, but we're, to be honest, 
will really appreciate the unokal because they normally people would have just killed the man or just what they do. Why? 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 No, you know, we had a lot of call for people for the visit to attend the Okay. But why would you hurt an innocent dumb animal? It doesn't know better. Yeah, but you know, people still have cruelty and anxiety. If they're going to kill people, they want to But if you know, they just protect their habitat. That's what they try to do. They're, they're not doing anything to anyone. What's your name? Reginald. Reginald, nice to meet you. And yours? My name's Savannah. Now you're now you're gonna be on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's a beautiful park. Okay, Bully Zoo, here we go. And we also did something else amazing at the Bully Zoo. Now the Bully Zoo is one of the most world-renowned zoos. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna be very emotional. In 2008, I came to Belize to have my first try at researching wild crocodiles. Getting more drunk. Let's get a little bit more drunk. So this is what we do to uh, get leeches off. We spray alcohol on them, and it gets them a little drunk, and then they just pretty much fall off the, the crocodiles and alligators. This guy's really embedded in though. And within the first four months I was here, I met this amazing woman known as Sharon Matola. An American with a passion for animals has built an extraordinary preserve for some of them. Sharon had this amazing bond with all of her animals over the years. She has become a great friend, a mentor, a role model. Meet not Navi Don, this wonderful tape there, close up. Oh. <laughs> well, I hope you don't mind a little, a little mud here. All of this was the dream of Sharon Matola. She, in a sense, was my was my mother in conservation. This past year in March, Sharon passed away. I was astounded. I would I would go into schoolrooms when I first came to Belize and ask the kids to draw me a picture of a tapir, and they couldn't do it. They had no idea what a tapir looked like. Is there a theme to what's on display here? The theme is that every animal in the Belize Zoo is Belizean, and so... So there are no giraffes? You won't find a polar bear at the Belize Zoo. And... Sharon had asked, right before she had passed away, if I could do a health examination on the crocodiles at the Belize Zoo. And her special croc rose. Um, rose is about nine years old. She's an American crocodile. And it's an amazing story. And Rose had never had a health examination. The story behind Rose is actually quite amazing. And Sharon wrote a book about it that you can buy if you ever visit the Belize Zoo. And I'm sure you can find it online. This croc rocks. And so the story is, just in short, someone found a crocodile egg and they thought it was dead and they brought it to the zoo, they brought it to Sharon and Sharon just kind of looking at it, oh, this would be a great educational tool. And Sharon uses it at the zoo, she goes around to various schools and is using this egg for education to promote coexistence with crocodiles. She was a true champion in regards of crocodile conservation here in Belize. I mean, she is the OG queen in the crocodile world here in Belize. She has the egg on her desk. You know, Sharon's doing her business, and all of a sudden she starts noticing there's a baby crocodile coming out of that egg. I, for many of you that know, when we do nest research, when researchers are conducting nest surveys on crocodiles, one thing you do is that when you take the egg out of the nest, you're not supposed to move it because tipping the egg, it could kill the growing, the growing fetus inside. Yet this crocodile still hatched healthy, um, as just a healthy crocodile. And Sharon bonded with this crocodile that she named Rose. Rose was just a very docile croc. You know, a lot of people were able to take pictures with her. You pat her on the head. She just kind of closed her eyes. Sharon had been battling with infection, with a bacterial infection for a while. 
and unfortunately she passed away mid-March. I of course wanted to keep my promise, fulfill this promise, and conduct the, a health examination in my rooms. And knowing that I had Louis Ziegler, who is also a great mentor of mine, and Savannah and Joe with all of our talk background, I thought, okay, this will be great timing. Everyone's here and everyone can bring in their various experience and expertise in conducting a really great health examination on Rose, um, along with Dr. Philip Shield, who is a vet here in Belize. All these beautiful memories of Sharon coming up. And right before we put Rose away, they, and I, I felt like Savannah could see what I was doing. I grabbed Rose's hand and took a picture with her. Just as, in a sense, my, my way of saying goodbye and I'm gonna do my best in continuing, you know, my best in conservation as a way to, to honor Sharon. I can, in a sense, my mom in conservation. So not only when Marissa reached out to me, because we've been friends for a good long time, and told me the story of Rose and also told me what was going on with Sam. Gatorland Global was really happy to help out with that. We donated funds to fly people here and get this surgery done for Sam. And then we also got to be with Marissa for Rose's health check, which was amazing. Absolutely. And uh, she's very healthy. <laughs> And none of that we could have done without you guys. So we're really happy to support the CRC and Marissa. And we know that you guys are too. So thank you so much for being with us in this vlog. We love you. Keep on watching. Thank you. Do us a favor. Check that like button. Smash notifications on. And please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Tell your friends too, too. We're trying our best to help crocodiles and alligators, not just in the state of Florida, but all over the world. And we thank you for being a part of the Gatorland family. Bye. Okay, hatchling number 13.